Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video we're going to look at the top 10 statistics that you need to know for your New South Wales Economics HSC in 2019. So we're going to look at some Australian stats and some global stats that will be really useful in helping you explain during your short answer and essay questions about what's happening right now in the Australian and global economies. This is really important because during the exam process, markers are often looking for that kind of knowledge that shows you could only have written this response in this particular year. So these statistics will be so useful in making that very clear. Okay, so let's get started. So how was that? I'd probably split it into two. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to split this into two parts. So part one, we'll do the first five and part two, the next video, we'll do the rest. But uh, I am definitely going to presenting, uh, going to be presenting both videos. So, it's okay. Wait, is that my hat? Okay, so let's start with statistic number one. Stat number one is 1.4%, which represents Australia's annual GDP growth to the June quarter in 2019. 1.4% is pretty low. We're really looking for figures that sort of go around three to four percent that would be really excellent in terms of Australia's economic growth uh, getting that creation of jobs and increased output and production for the economy if we're using this statistic as well this 1.4 percent something else you could mention is that Australia's economic growth is only 1.4 percent on an annual basis and interest rates are at historic lows that seems like a very unusual situation and something you might want to discuss in terms of your responses. Okay, statistic number two is 5.2%. 5.2%, that is Australia's unemployment rate as of September 2019. 5.2% sounds okay. I mean, during the financial crisis, the fear was sort of high sixes into the sevens, and that's going back to 2008-09. So what is important to think about is, yes, it is relatively low, but it has been increasing. And also the Reserve Bank is worried about this rise in unemployment. That is still lost production from people who are not working and producing and contributing to economic activity. The other thing to think about is that the Nairu, that non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, that point where there is no cyclical unemployment, the RBA's estimates have that around 4.5%. So we've still got some way as a country to reduce that level of cyclical unemployment to come down to the Nairu. So this is this kind of creeping up of unemployment and its consequences for economic growth and output. So stat number three is the underutilization rate underutilization rate. Now, this rate is made up of the unemployment rate and the underemployment rate. So at the moment, the moment being September 2019, it's always so fraught putting like specific dates in a in a YouTube video because you never know when someone's going to be. So 13.5%, that's relatively high. That represents a substantial amount of lost output because you've got this combination of unemployment, so people that, that don't have a job are not producing, and then you combine that with underemployment. So people who have a job, but they'd like to work more hours. They would really love to make more stuff and earn more money. So the underutilization rate is 13.5%. And if you're giving this statistic some context, what you can say is that this represents a substantial amount of lost output in the Australian economy. Stat number four, stat number four is 2.3%. And this is Australia's wage growth. And this is according to the wage price index for the June quarter of 2019. 
2.3% is relatively weak. We're not seeing very strong growth in people's incomes. Now, let's think about what this actually means. So if I'm going to say, oh, Australia's wage growth is only 2.3%, full stop, new point, I haven't done enough. What I would want to say is that Australia's wage growth is 2.3%, relatively weak, which means that people's incomes are not rising, which means they can't spend more on goods and services. And remember that that spending, that consumption, represents around 60% of GDP. So if people aren't earning more, they're not spending more, which means GDP isn't growing more. And that could be a nice connection to have running through this particular statistic. Stat number five is 1.6 stroke 1.5%. And this is headline versus core inflation, the June quarter for 2019. Now, this is very important because it is below the target band. Remember that the RBA has a target. Why do I always say remember? I mean, how would you Remember, how would I know? RBA has this target band, it's, its goal, right, for inflation to remain between 2 to 3% over the course of the business cycle. For some time now, that level of inflation has been below the target. So we're having inflation that is too low in terms of our economy, the Australian economy. So it's important to know that in, at the moment, headline, so the overall level of inflation and core stripping out those volatile components are both below the target band. And this is despite record low interest rates. Now you might be saying, why is inflation so low? And I would say, good question. And you can click the card above and go see a separate video I've done on why is inflation so low? Okay, so I hope that video was very useful for you. Those are the first five stats and it's just me here. Now I'm, I'm, I'm the real Mr. Simons. Anyway, make sure you come back for part two to get the other five stats. Hope this was useful. Questions, clarifications, just put them in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.